Good morning everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Karen here back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own DevSecOps lab. So this lab will help you test your CICD pipelines and your security tooling. Um, and this would sort of like act as your test bed. So if you want to test any tooling, uh, security related tooling in your CICD pipelines, you can do that. For this particular lab, I'm using GitLab. Um, as a CICD platform and then I am hosting my own GitLab runner on my local machine which would be running these jobs. So just as a background you don't really need um, to spend any money for this lab it's actually free of cost the reason being uh, the, the GitLab account is free to sign up you can simply sign up for GitLab and then you can simply create um, a virtual machine on your local machine which would be running um, any version of Linux. So in my lab, I am using the latest version of Ubuntu and I will show you all of this uh, as, I, as I take you through step-by-step step how to set up this lab. So first prerequisite for this lab is that you have a free GitLab account. So you can simply sign up by going to gitlab.com and you would get a free account. And once you have signed up for GitLab, you come to this page and then you can create a new project. So ignore these uh, existing projects for now. So I'm just simply creating a blank project and I'm just going to give it a name, say Wise Fox. Okay, um, you can ignore that. So I'm just using um, this particular group for now. And yeah, and then I will just leave everything as default and I'm going to go create project. So this will help me create my GitLab project. So again, as I said previously, this particular account is free and I am, I'm not paying any money for it. So this is free to sign up and you can go to gitlab.com and you can sign up. So here you can see the Wise Fox project has been created. So for now, this is all we need to do on the GitLab side and I will show you what else we have to do. So in order for you to test your pipelines and the tooling that you're going to integrate into your pipeline there is a thing called runners so runners are um, the machines that would run your ci cd jobs so we we can use either the runners that are supplied by gitlab so these runners are called shared runners in order for you to create or use sorry the in order for you to use these shared runners you have to supply GitLab with your credit card even though these are free but you still have to provide um, your credit card details if you're not comfortable with that what I would recommend um, you create your own runner so I'm gonna disable the the shared runner option here and now what we're gonna do is we are going to create our own GitLab runner which is sitting on my own virtual machine that is um, running the latest version of Ubuntu. And I'm going to take you step by step how to create uh, this runner in your virtual machine. And then I will also show you, show you how to sort of link that runner under this GitLab account so we can run our job. So end of the day, once all of this is done, I will show you, um, I will run a sample pipeline, which would um, run on our newly created GitLab runner and if all goes well that means the runner that we have created or installed and the runner that we have linked under this GitLab account um, has been linked successfully and it's doing what it's intended to do. So let's just go now on our Ubuntu machine which is right here. Let me quickly log in. Sorry I pressed enter too quickly. Right. So this is just the latest version of Ubuntu that I'm running. Let me zoom in quickly. So don't worry if you, um, what I will do, all the commands that I'm gonna type here, I'm gonna post them in the description of this video. So you can just simply refer to those commands or I will just simply create a repository you can go to and you can sort of see the, see the commands there. So this is just a fresh install of Ubuntu and what we are going to do is we are going to create this virtual machine um, as a GitLab runner. Okay, so first what we need to do is let's 
just install, um, download the binary of the GitLab runner down to our machine. I don't think I have curl installed on this um, version of Ubuntu. So let me just quickly install that. You may already have it, but like, let me just quickly install that one. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. So once this is, okay, cool, so that was quick. So once this is installed, let's just, um, let me quickly make sure that I am sharing my clipboard. Okay, so that's fine now. Right, so I'm just downloading the binary of the GitLab runner here. Alrighty, so it is being downloaded. I hope this lab helps you sort of, um, you know, with your um, DevSecOps journey because, you know, you may be testing these tools. Look, another thing that I want to raise here is because this is just a test lab. So please don't sort of replicate the configurations that we are going to use here in the lab in your production environment because I, didn't, I don't take any responsibility for that because this is just a test bed. OK, so what do you want to do is perhaps you want to look in thoroughly into all the commands that we type and the permissions that we are using here in the test bed uh, but when you're replicating this stuff in the production so thoroughly review what you're doing in your production environment and do not replicate what we're doing in this sort of lab environment so hope that that clarifies okay so here we just give the permissions um, to GitLab runner for uh, to execute and are we just creating a GitLab runner user with this command Cool, so that's done. And now we're gonna run GitLab runner as a service. So this next command will help us achieve that. Cool, that's done. And now finally, let's just start this GitLab runner. Okay, cool. Let me just run this command quickly just to make sure that we've got GitLab runner working appropriately okay cool so we've got the GitLab runner working we can see the version number and stuff okay cool so this is this bit is done now the next thing that we need to do is now we've installed the GitLab runner on our virtual machine and the next thing that we need to do is to register this runner under GitLab and in order to achieve that this is the command that we need to do uh, need to use the last part of this command request you to enter the registration token. Now, some of you would wonder from where you're going to get this registration token. So let me just show you that. So under your GitLab, once you have signed up under your GitLab.com um, and once you've created your project, you come under settings, CICD, click under expand on runners and you will see your registration token. So I'm just going to copy that. And I am going to hit insert and enter. So it's asking me a bunch of questions now. Enter the GitLab instance URL. So if if your GitLab instance URL is different from the one that is uh, already displayed here, please enter that. In my case, I am using GitLab.com, so I'm just going to use that. Enter the registration token. Cool, I've used that enter description for the runner well I'm just gonna say local runner okay enter tags for runner it could be anything I'm just gonna type local there enter optional maintenance node for the runner none I'm just gonna leave it there so this bit is important so this this step is asking what sort of executor do you want for your GitLab I had issues with the docker executor even though using docker executor is really nice and quite neat when you're running multiple jobs on the runner but what i'm gonna do is instead of choosing docker here i'm gonna use the shell executor this is again just my personal preference you can choose to use docker uh, but i had some issues with the artifacts when i was using docker executor so uh, for the lab purpose i'm only i'm going to use the shell executor it shouldn't make much of a difference in a lab environment so I'm just using shell for now. So once I've chosen my executor and pressed enter, as you can see, it says runner registered successfully. 
um, and all of that jazz. So now let's go back to our GitLab and let's see if our runner um, got registered. So let's refresh this page again. Um, expand runners again and there you go so the runner that we created or registered you can see that runner available here so that means when we create a job under when we create a pipeline the job that would be triggered with that pipeline will be uh, run on this particular runner that we have registered uh, we are not using the shared runners this is our private runner that we have created Hope that makes sense. Couple of things before we progress. Um, I was encountering some issues before. So in order for you to sort of, um, you know, you don't, I don't want you to like spend hours troubleshooting this stuff because I've already done so. So let me um, show you a couple of things that you need to do. Cause you would be encountering some error messages. So make sure that you remove um, these couple of files under this particular location so if you go cd home gitlab runner if you do alistair shell so you want to remove this particular file here because otherwise um it throws an error um, i'm not going to show you all of that but you can trust me on that one because i spent hours doing this right so that's done next thing that we need is because some of the things that we're gonna run here uh, may need git so I'm just gonna install git on my app on my this Ubuntu install so I'm gonna go app get install git yes that's fine so make sure like you install git as well um, and then if you're if you're using anything related to docker inside your runner oh sorry and inside your jobs like say if you're pulling docker containers as part of your jobs then you also need to install docker on your runner okay so hope that um, makes sense now next thing we need to do so once this is all done we can go back to our GitLab CICD or go back to sorry to our main project here and now since the runner is installed the runner is registered and we have sort of made that little change that we had to I think we are all good to go because I'm not going to test anything regarding docker so hopefully what I've done so far should work as expected um, and in order for us to test um, a pipeline what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create a file this file is really like the core file of your um, of your pipelines um, so the the name of the file is dot gitlab dash cy dot yml so yml stands for yaml so this is in the yaml format and the pipeline that we are going to test its contents are let me just quickly paste that here so this is what we are going to test. So in this file, we've got four stages or four, um, four stages, and we have defined four separate jobs for each stage. And all we are doing is we are saying under the build stage, just simply echo that this is a build stage. So what echo command is going to do, it's just simply going to print out whatever a string there is in these double quotes and similarly we have created three other jobs under separate stages with separate names and once we go and do commit changes so if I go to my pipelines again since we triggered the changes you can see all of our jobs ran so if you want to view more information about a particular job you can simply click on the job and you can see what's actually going on behind the scenes so you can see because we selected shell executor while registering our runner it's using that shell executor and all we were doing in that particular job was just printing that this is a test stage and the result of that we can see here and the job was successful 
So yeah, so you know what we entered um, as part of our build, as part of our pipeline here, it actually got executed on our private runner, which means our private runner that we registered with GitLab and the runner that we installed is running successfully. So now you can pretty much go ahead and you can start testing um, you know, various tools by creating your own sample pipelines. If you are interested in more DevSecOps related content or you wanna see more videos, please feel free to let me know. Also, um, yeah, and, and again, just to sort of reiterate, if you're running anything regarding Docker, like if you're pulling any container as part of your jobs, you need to make sure that the Docker, you have installed Docker on your runner and um, you have a, a enabled Docker on startup and you have uh, enabled Docker daemon and all of that jazz. So yeah, so I think this is all for this video. If you have any questions or if you come across any issues, feel free to let me know and I'll be happy to help you with that. With that said, um, have a great day guys and I'll see you guys in the next one.